Hello everyone, welcome to the third episode of the Awakening 3D model. In the last episode, we started with the basics of creating an armature in Blender. We learned about different armature interaction modes, object mode, edit mode, and pose mode. We also discussed the importance of the armature's origin, location, rotation, and scale. Then, we moved on to organizing our rigging process, including how to name and categorize collections for better management. We also covered bone structure in Blender, explaining the three main parts of a bone, the head, tail, and body. In terms of armature settings, we went through the object tab and viewport display settings to make the rigging process easier, focusing on keeping things organized and clear. We also explored customizing bone colors and adjusting the bone display in different modes to help with visibility. Finally, we started the process of bone placement. We created and renamed bones to control different parts of the character. We also learned how to extrude bones and ensure their heads are positioned correctly to handle transformations. And now, in this part, we're gonna explore bone connections. We're also gonna learn about the importance of bone roll and how to adjust it. And finally, we'll explore the different types of bones. Bone connections are one of the most important parts of rigging. These connections directly affect how our character moves. Let's take the first step. Keep in mind that this should be done in edit mode. The color coding we've set up can help us focus and avoid mistakes. As we know, this bone is responsible for controlling all the other bones. So, by moving the base, all the bones should move along with it. In other words, we can consider the base as the start of the bone chain. The linkage is the connection between the base and the other joints we've created so far. Okay, let's get started. Any bone you create using extrude is automatically going to be the child of the previous bone. Above linkage, there are two paths. We created both of these paths with extrude. So, back arm is the child of linkage, and elbow is the child of back arm. Similarly, fork block is a child of linkage, side arm is a child of fork block, and top side arm is a child of side arm. Now we reach top back arm, which wasn't created with extrude. Since the top back arm controls the back part of the character, we'll make it a child of the elbow. Just select top back arm first, then elbow. Now, press Ctrl P and a window will pop up. It gives us two options. Both options perform the parent-child operation, but with one difference. If you choose Keep Offset, the top back arm is going to stay in its current position and become the child of the elbow. But, if you choose Connect, as you can see, the head of top back arm is going to snap to the tail of the elbow. This option can be very useful, but here, we'll use Keep Offset because we want the bone to stay in place. From now on, it'll follow the elbow. To see the connections, go to the Overlays panel and enable Relationship Lines. As you can see, the connections are shown with dashed lines. To test, let's switch to pose mode. We'll see that when we move the base, all the bones connected to it move too. Also, when we move the elbow, the top side arm moves with it. If, in a project, you've placed bones like this and later decide to add a joint in between, just hold shift, select both bones, and press F. You can also find this option in the armature panel under fill between joints. If needed, you can select Subdivide here and use this panel to add more bones. Now, pay attention to this point. When we use Fill, the newly added joint will only be a child of the previous joint. But if you want it to be fully part of the chain, you need to select both bones, press Ctrl P, and choose either Keep Offset or Connect. Right-clicking also gives us access to other common tools. As you can see, Subdivide, Duplicate, Extrude, Fill, and Parent are available here. There are also other tools here that we'll explore later if needed. Now, we move on to Shade, which is not in the chain. This is because the neck-like top sidearm was created separately. I'll also make the neck a child of Bridal, as it needs to follow it. First, select Neck, then Bridal. Press Ctrl plus P and choose Keep Offset. Keep in mind, we can always change these connections later. Now, all our joints are connected and will move according to the plan we have in mind. The next step is adjusting the bone roll. To see it, we can go to the data properties and enable axes. You'll see that each bone has its own axis, which affects its location and rotation. To understand bone roll better, let's test it out. Let's go to pose mode for testing. For example, look at the axis of back arm and elbow. The Y axis of both joints points toward the opposite side of the joint, but their Z and X axis are different. Pay attention to their x-axis. In back arm, the x-axis points to the positive global x-axis, and in elbow, it points the opposite way. 
Let's rotate the back arm around the x-axis a bit in the negative direction, and do the same with the elbow. You'll see that they move exactly opposite of each other, because their x-axis are not aligned. To fix this, we just need to align the two axes. The y and x-axis should be our reference. The y-axis should always follow the main direction of the bone, and the x-axis should be perpendicular to it and point to the positive x-axis in the global coordinate system. This way, the z-axis will automatically adjust. There are three ways to adjust the bone roll. Go to Edit Mode, select the bone, and click the option to adjust its roll. Alternatively, select the bone and press Ctrl R to adjust the roll. The third method, which I prefer for characters like this that follow a fixed principle, is to go to the Armature tab, then Bone Roll, and select Recalculate Roll. You can also access this with the shortcut Shift N. Here you'll get some options that you can try to find the right one for your needs. One useful option here is Active Bone. If you've already adjusted the roll of one bone and want to adjust the others based on it, hold Shift, select the first bone, and then select the next bone. This will apply the roll adjustment to the other bones. You'll see that the roll is adjusted easily based on the active bone we've selected. As you can see, the roll of all the bones is now aligned in the correct direction. In Blender, there are five different types of bones that we can use depending on the task at hand, and we can convert between them as needed. Octahedral bone. This is the default bone type that appears when you create an armature. It's considered a standard bone. If you need to change it, simply go to the Data Properties tab, then under Viewport Display, you can change it in the Display as section. One of the positive aspects of the octahedral bone is that, by looking at it, you can easily tell which direction your chain is pointing. Due to its octagonal shape, its rotation is easily visible, making it very practical. Stick bone. This bone type has fewer visual indicators and a very minimalistic appearance. However, you can still see which direction it points, because, except for the root of the chain, each child has only one point, which is the tip. But, unlike the octahedral bone, you cannot easily tell the rotation direction just by looking at it. Wire bone. This is even more minimal than the stick bone. The only thing you can see about this bone is its length. There are no visible indicators of its rotation or direction. It's a very stripped down bone type, useful for specific cases where rotation and direction aren't crucial for visualization. Envelope bone. We have the envelope bone, but for now, we don't need to focus on this. It's not something we need to engage with at this stage. B-bone or bendy bone. This is a highly useful bone type with many practical advantages. One of its key features is the ability to subdivide it. To do this, go to the bone menu, open bendy bone, and you'll see this amazing feature. When I rotate the bone, you can see it forms a nice curve. This feature is extremely useful for creating cables, ropes, and other flexible objects. It also helps reduce the number of bones you need for rigging certain flexible objects. Another advantage of the B-bone is its scaling capability. You can scale it normally with S, and to scale it along its width, you can press Ctrl Alt Shift S. If you want two bones at the same point, oriented in the same direction, the B-bone makes it easy to achieve and control. For example, I can duplicate this bone, modify one of them, and distinguish it from the other, making it easier to select. These different bone types offer various advantages depending on what you're trying to accomplish in your rigging work. Each type can be useful for different kinds of characters or objects you might be working with. Thank you for joining me in this section. Don't forget, to truly learn, we must practice, practice, and practice. So please open the project and apply what we've learned in this episode. Feel free to leave your comments and suggestions below. I'm here to answer all your questions. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.